Since I bought the Elise, I've actually found out more. It's not good news. Obviously, when you see damage of this kind being fixed with filler, it's never a good sign. The into the area where the roll bar comes down and into that horrible picture that I found online once I had bought the car. And there is definitely something very wrong going on here. Um, the sill should be wider here. No, this car really is one step away from being dead. Hello everybody, welcome to number 27, I'm Jack. First of all, an apology, the last, the first video that I did on the Elise, I do realise it was entitled, why is it so cheap and everything, and then I never told you. There's a couple of reasons for this, I did give you a hint with that painted sill. Um, but there are a couple of reasons. I was so excited in such a rush to get it out in the snow and film it in the snow, because I just thought that would be great. Um, I was in a rush to edit it and all the rest of it and I didn't get it quite the way I wanted but you will find out everything you need to find out in this video here. I bought this car knowing that I was taking a risk but I didn't really want to buy just a nice sorted very good S1 Lotus Elise because it would have been quite boring for YouTube and a bit boring for me as well. Well it wouldn't have been boring I would have loved it but I do like cars with a bit of a story and trust me this car has got quite a story. Straight away, let me tell you that this Elise was written off not once, but twice. Both times as a Cat C. Now, most people think that Cat C is always structural. It's not. It's a function of how much of the value, it can be structural, um, but it's also a function of how much of the value of the car goes over a certain amount with regards to repairs. In any case, it's been a Cat C twice, and that is once, and I think it was the first time, it was hit, from what I've pieced together so far, it was hit from this side. And that actually did some chassis damage. Now we all know with the Elise, they are infamous for having chassis which are supposedly unfixable. They're not, but usually economically, they're not worth fixing. So people used to do complete chassis transplants if you had an issue with the chassis. Chassis are no longer available. Uh, there are some secondhand ones on for about three, 4,000, but they have chassis damage as well. So it seems a little bit pointless to go down that route. Plus it really wouldn't be worth repairing. The other time it was cat seed, it looks like the front clam was hit. This has been replaced. However, the crash structure and everything else, the suspension is untouched. So I'm pretty sure what happened is the first time it was cat seed, obviously it halved its value. So the second time it was hit and a new front clam was needed, um, they wrote it off again for the same reason. When I, when I started looking into this, I knew that there was some damage here that hadn't been properly fixed because if you look at the inside of this sill here, has quite a big amount of filler on it, which never bodes well. Obviously, when you see damage of this kind being fixed with filler, it's never a good sign. The previous owner had this car for five years. He bought it knowing it was a Cat C, but not knowing it was twice a Cat C. And he's used it quite happily. I think, let's just take it for a quick drive, see how it drives, because there's a lot more investigating to do with that, that damage and how it was fixed. And I'll tell you a bit more on my favorite road. Since I bought the Elise, I've actually found out more and it's not good news. But before we go into that, let's talk a little bit about what these cars were like when they first came out. And that was completely revolutionary. They started out a whole new way of manufacturing for Lotus. And it really went back to what Lotus does well, and that is it went back to actually making cars that were amazing to drive, but not necessarily concentrating so much on trying to compete with Porsche and Ferrari, but on doing what they do best and making incredibly good handling cars. I can't push this too far on this road for lots of reasons, but one of them is that it has very old tires and it's wet but it's certainly a nicer drive today than it was in the snow uh, a few days ago. So for all intents and purposes, it's a really nice car to drive. 
The steering is so sweet. It must be one of the best steering systems available on any car. It's got just the right weight, just the right amount of communication and the little car responds so well to inputs. It's just wonderful, it really is. I'm getting used to the gearbox now and liking it a bit more. It's so short throw and that is really nice too. The whole experience is so raw. If you enjoy driving, if you truly enjoy driving, get yourself one of these. Whatever else you have, you know, whatever sort of hot hatch or whatever else you have just cannot compare in terms of the way this drives. There's, there's nothing that can touch it. As I've mentioned before, this has the VBC engine. Really seems to pick up steam between five and six. Car looks good. These bits of the floors are straight. It drives straight. Handles really well. And if you brake, absolutely no problem. Brakes in a straight line. As I said, I knew that this sill had been mucked about with, and my the best scenario for me was, yes, it had been crushed in a little bit, but ultimately the car is geoed, it drives well, it drives straight, so I wasn't too worried about it. So that was the best case scenario. However, since then, I have found out more. On one of the Lotus forums, there's someone who bought this uh, in 2015 or 2014. He knew it was a Cat C. But when he started digging a little bit into that sill, he found some really disturbing stuff. Essentially, I'll show you now what it is. Looks like this sill has definitely been crushed quite a bit, but quite a bit more than I would have thought. To the extent that the roll bar on this side, at least in 2015, looked like it wasn't attached to anything, which is really pretty serious. In 2015, it was sold as a parts car. I think it was sold for about 6,500, with it all being obvious and as a parts car. So I kind of factored this into my thoughts when I bought this. I, I paid seven and a half for it. It was probably, I would have been happier with seven to be quite honest, but I wanted a car with a story and I thought, look, if it turns out that it's just unsafe to keep on the road, even if I sell it as a parts car, it's gotta be worth, you know, six and a half grand, something like that. So with my YouTube revenue and other bits, I'll kind of cover the cost and it will be an interesting journey. People say that the K-Series really suits this car. And I kind of agree, as long as you're thrashing the hell out of it, it does feel right. It's a rough old lump though. to this particular car which I will now name the Frankenlees because it has been bodged so badly by the looks of it. It's weird because when you drive it there's absolutely no indication that there's anything wrong with it. The chassis feels absolutely rock solid on bumpy roads everything you cannot feel anything you know there's still stiffness there clearly. Although what would happen if you got crashed into on the side or anything like that well that's a different matter. When I get back, I'm going to cut out that bit just behind the sill here, which will give us a look into the, um, into the area where the roll bar comes down and into that horrible picture that I found online once I had bought the car. Now, the optimists among us can think, well, I love to drive it, even at these slow speeds. So the optimists among us can say, well, Whoever bought it in 2015, hopefully, will have found a way to at least bolt down the roll bar, maybe fix it up a little bit, weld in some alley. I think the reality is that whoever bought it, bought it to make a quick profit. And most likely, all that's been done is that that's been covered up and painted. And it's probably as bad as it was before. 
if that's the case, this really is a bit of a dog. Uh, and number 27 is becoming the disaster channel. You've seen the video I did just before this one, my Ferrari found that my 308 that I've been trying to restore back to health, that's got a cracked block. So that's gonna be a huge amount of work for me to, to put that right, but I am gonna do that. I bought this as a bit of a lottery, knowing there were risks, I calculated risks, but it looks like it's, it's gonna turn out on the really worse end of the scale of what, what it could have been like. Um, anyhow, take it home to the garage, get cutting into that little bit of bodywork just above the sill and we'll expose what's going on. At that stage, I'll have to make some decisions. I've got to thank the Lotus Enthusiasts owners or Selloc. Uh, look them up online. It's a forum and they've been very helpful. In particular, Phil Peak, uh, known on there as Junks, has been really supportive and has given me advice. Anyway, you get the trim panel off, the seat off, and we can see a whole lot more. And what we can see is definitely, definitely not good. Before I bought this car, I had had a chance to have a look at this rear chassis leg here. So when I picked it up, the clam was off. I helped the previous owner to put that back on. I'd had a chance to look at it and it looked completely straight. So certainly from that point all on, the chassis leg is fine. What we see here though is this roll bar has now been bolted down at the front at least, which is better than nothing, but still obviously not good enough. And there is definitely something very wrong going on here. Um, the sill should be wider here. Uh, and if I put my hand in there, I can feel something's definitely not, not right. Um, it looks like it's sort of folded over um to at least some degree on there so not looking very good um this panel which covers the fuel tank i've heard from different people that it is structural or it isn't but this has also been bodged it's been cut in two places and i can see that the original is still underneath so i think that rippled when it got hit and they've basically sort of pushed it down and covered it up to make it look straight the one tiny bit of ray of hope is that the bottom of the chassis, so that the main bottom side of the chassis is completely unaffected. It's totally straight. It looks like the hit was really limited to this top spar sill. Uh, this is also where they filled it to try and make it to thicken it out. But all in all, it's really not looking very good. There are really strongly held views in the Lotus community about these chassis. Generally speaking, Certainly it used to be that whatever had happened to the chassis, if it had some damage, then you couldn't repair it and you had to get a new one. As I've said before, you can't get new ones now. Um, plus, lots of these have been raced, and I know that those race cars, when they crash, they will just fix up the chassis. They're not gonna bung a new chassis on every time. So there is a way of fixing them. I have to find out what the extent of the damage is um, to that upper sill. I think on the external panel coming this way, it's been punched in like that here. Hasn't gone onto the lower tub, but it has been punched here and has definitely done some damage there. The next step then is to remove this sort of sill covering, which is a lot more than just a sill covering. It extends all the way to the front and over the top and under the clam here. Having spoken to, um, to Phil, he suggested that it's probably gonna be easier to just see, I'm gonna sort of, take that sill, the top bit of the sill down to bare metal again so I can see where it's been bodged and where the damage starts and then just cut the sill to that level because apparently taking the front of the sill covering off is a real, real pain. A little bit easier on the back but you can have problems with that as well. So this is, this is where we are. I, I went into this with eyes open so I, you know, I'm not, I'm not particularly pissed off or anything like that. It's, um, yeah, I rolled the dice and the dice came out with a pretty low number. I think it's, um, it's, it's quite a lot of damage, but I'm hopeful it can still be saved. Uh, let's see what happens going forward. Thank you so much for watching. If any of you know how, what original crash happened to this car to, to cause this damage, if you used to own the Franken Lees, or if you, you know, if you know what happened to it or any history, I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my Instagram. That's the easiest way for you to send me messages. That's what I check pretty much all the time. So uh, yeah, see you for the next update.